Good morning. It's Sunday morning and I really want to have a lovely relaxing day so I thought I would share with you. I'm not feeling 100% today. I'm at home on my own this weekend because Alex is in Surrey seeing his family and I don't know what it is whenever I spend time by myself in this house. <laughs> I'm so used to him being here that when he's not here, I don't know if any of you have this if you live with someone else, that it just feels a bit weird. It's like I'm not scared by living in this house or anything um, because we do live in the countryside in the middle of nowhere. I suppose it's the change of routine that throws me off and I find myself waking up kind of thinking like, what am I gonna do? I don't know, it's weird. Or maybe it's just the mood I'm in. Maybe it's because of the stage of my cycle I'm in right now because I do notice the change in my mood. Um, but I'm going to vlog to try and remain positive and get the things that I wanted to do today done. So if you're feeling the same, maybe this can motivate you. I find that when you feel that way, your brain can kind of be like, oh, you should just lie on the sofa all day and do nothing. And that leads to overthinking. So it, it is helpful when your brain is kind of over, I don't know, taking over to, I, I try and do it like I'm a sim. <laughs> this is gonna sound so funny. I try and do it where I just, I just go through the motions and I just stick to my plan. So my plan was to vlog and my brain was like, I don't want to vlog, it's a Sunday. So I'm sticking to it and I had a few things that I needed to get done. So I'm just going to stick to them and not, not think too much. When I get, yeah, when my brain gets a bit like whirring away, I try and just stick to the plan I already had and I try and stick to what I wanted to do and not think about it too much and not question it and just go through with it because it's those days when you're not really capable of making decisions or knowing what you need. Um, if you don't have a strong like gut instinct. So I'm gonna continue with my routine. That's why I love routines so much. They keep me going. I'm going to do my skincare, have some breakfast and then take Roxy out. I usually walk her before breakfast, but it's a Sunday. So I've woken up a bit later, so I'm quite hungry. Um, and that should make me feel a lot better. And I'm gonna to stick to my list of things to do today and yeah, hopefully have a really lovely, cozy, wholesome, lovely, calming day. I wanna bake a cake um, and yeah, just have a lovely, lovely day, um, relaxing. So I'm gonna wash my face. I recently got this Oskia Renaissance Cleansing Gel. I bought, I've, had, I've been buying this for years. The last one I bought, Alex broke the lid because it's quite a intense package. Um, and this like fell and broke and I couldn't, I literally physically could not open it to get the product out, which is probably a bit of a, a failing on the design of the packaging. I really think it should be a different packaging design because it's really heavy um, plastic. But anyway, I love this cleanser. It's incredible. So I'm gonna use this first. If you're a gel cleanser lover like I am, then you will love this cleanser. It's quite similar to the Ren gel cleanser in terms of how it feels, though the Ren one foams up better. This one doesn't really foam, which actually I quite like because I do have oily skin. Um, I don't know if that's an oily skin thing. I just don't like it when my face feels like it's just been stripped of its moisture. I really don't like cream or foam cleansers. They feel too intense. Next, I'm gonna use the Paula's Choice 2% BHA liquid. This is something I always have in my skincare routine. It's just one of those products that when you use it, you immediately notice the difference. It is, it's just something that, yeah, just immediately shows up in your skin. If you've got blackheads or a breakout, you use this and it just exfoliates your skin so well that all of that goes away. You can feel it on your face when you're putting it on. I love it so much. And I have quite um, open pores because I have oily skin, so it really helps with that. And it always comes out dirty. Like I just washed my face. I washed my face double cleanse last night. 
I don't know what that's about, but I guess it pulls a lot of the stuff out. And then I'm gonna use the Tropic Morning Mist. I love this. I love a morning mist. I always get it on my neck area as well. Now next I usually use the Biosense Vitamin C Serum. I've run out of it. I do have, I'm gonna see if I have another Vitamin C Serum because I do love Vitamin C in the morning. Oh yes, okay, I've got this Dr. Barbara Sturm Vitamin C Serum. I, haven't, I don't know if I've used this before. Feels lovely. And then I just bought this Tatcha water cream, which I love. I love a creamy, um, not creamy, sorry, a, um, a watery moisturizer. I just can't deal with the creamy moisturizers. A lot of moisturizers actually break me out. So do primers. So if you have sensitive oily skin, Give this a go, it's beautiful as a moisturizer. I'll link these below, I get them on Space NK. It's the place you can get lots of really good um, natural, vegan, cruelty-free, organic skincare. That's why I like to shop on there because you can't always find those kinds of things on other places. And then I'm feeling a little tired, so I am gonna use this Up Circle Eye Cream. I don't use this every day, but. I'm gonna use it today. I love a good skincare routine if I'm feeling off. Like, I can't explain to you the difference how I feel right now from before I started filming. I feel like a new woman, it's crazy. I saw a video actually this morning that was saying like, you know, we've been sold this idea that beauty as a form of self, is a form of self-care when it's not, it's not actually kind of thing. Like, caring about the way you look or beauty routines is just like preying on women's insecurities and it's just, capitalism and it's spending money and that might be true for some people but for me skincare makeup fashion feeling good looking good it makes such a huge difference to my mentality and no one's seeing me today I mean I know that you're I'm filming but I would probably do I would do this even if I wasn't filming it makes such a big difference to me personally and so if it does for you then keep at it because I love like feeling like my skin feels fresh and even if I'm not seeing anybody, I like the feeling of getting dressed in nice pretty clothes and putting on a bit of makeup. It just, the whole process is very relaxing and it feels good. <laughs> so I'm gonna go put some makeup on and get dressed and make myself some breakfast. You thought you got rid of me, but I'm not quite done. I wanted to share some things I got recently that I really love and if you're similar in, to me and you like natural organic I don't know if this is organic but if you you like the natural skincare makeup you want to get cruelty free vegan and you also like the appearance of natural makeup I got these things from RMS Beauty I'm pretty sure their products are organic or lots of the ingredients are, are, are organic I got their concealer called Uncover Up I want to show you how good this concealer is um, and how natural it is. Maybe I'll get you a bit closer. Not the best camera angle, it's a bit too low, but I'll just slouch, because I'm not, oh, is that gonna be too low? Ever a glamorous influencer. <laughs> so many influencers, I've watched their videos and they're in their beautifully lit bathrooms with their lovely outfits, and I come on and I look like this. Um, with my wobbly camera, sorry. So you can see there's very dark under eye circles and it's always very visible if I have a late night, like last night I went to bed late. I had popcorn, which was very dehydrating because it's salty and it always shows up in my face, especially in my under eye circles. So they look especially puffy right now and dark, but this is their Uncover Up Concealer and I got it in the lightest shade. Um, that's actually something I didn't look at, whether their shade range is any good because the one I used to use, um, the Inica one, I love Inica products, but their shade range is abysmal. Um, so hopefully, I'll put on screen, I'll go look. I Hopefully this has a better uh, range for different skin tones, dark skin tones, because yeah. Um, but it's beautiful consistency. It comes in this little tub, like there's a tiny amount. It feels like skincare, which is what I like in a concealer. When a, when a concealer goes on powdery, 
or heavy, it immediately creases because I do have those under eye circles and therefore I've got lines under my eyes. And so if I use a concealer that's heavy, yeah, it may cover up my under eye circles, but it creases within 10 minutes. So look at the difference. I don't know, I think it's fabulous, but I just think also how easy that was to put on. I usually, what I do is I put one coat on, I do the rest of my makeup, and then just before I finish my makeup, I do put, well, I just put a second coat on then, yeah, I might put a little bit extra on just when I finish my makeup, but I just think that the difference Maybe the lighting isn't the best. Look at the difference in all these different lightings. It's just miraculous, but it's not heavy. It doesn't crease like other concealers do. I'm not a beauty influencer, but these things matter to me. And it is a beautiful, natural makeup product. It's not heavy at all. Like I'm putting this on and it feels like I'm putting on a moisturizer. And it, it takes zero effort. Zero, zero effort. The other place I get discoloration, you can see it's like um, my T-zone, my chin. Again, it shows up, it's really interesting, isn't it? How it shows up in your skin. I notice that the older I get, when I have a late night, even just like a glass of wine, like I had a glass of wine last night, just one glass. <laughs> and it shows up on my face the next day, like my skin looks more red. I've got a little spot here. I think it works better on under eye circles than spots, to be honest with you. I think this is more of a skin tone, evening up product. And I think if you're someone who's prone to spots, um, like it does the redness around my nose really well, but I think that if you're prone to spots, it's best to use a spot concealer alongside this, but I don't really get spots that often. I'm just gonna put my foundation on and I'm gonna show you the other two things. I'm using the Bare Minerals Stick Foundation. I don't always use this, but I feel a bit red today. I don't use very much. And then the Charlotte Tilbury Bronzer. This is the Lip to Cheek Demure shade. I think they had quite a few different ones, but I, I went for this one because I um, am pale. So I think cool toned blushes work best. Coral doesn't really work with me. It's a beautiful cream blusher. And it just looks like your skin. It does not look like you've got blush on. See how like rapidly that blended and it just looks like it's my blushed skin. I barely need to even blend it. That's literally it. And then one of the best things I think actually, I love all three things, but maybe this is my favorite, is their Living Luminizer C100. This is a highlighter. This highlighter is all I ever want in a highlighter because I've bought highlighters in the past and it very much feels like, because I'm so pale, it looks like I've just put glitter on my skin and it has like a gold tint to it or a pink tint to it, which if your skin is darker, then that would look really beautiful. But because I'm so pale, it just, it looks, the um, the base color to the highlighter is darker than my skin. So this is kind of like a clear, which I'll show you. It's like a clear, like lip balm almost, but it stays. Because in the past I actually have used lip balm for that purpose. But this, literally, this is not the best lighting. Oh, the lighting's not, oh, maybe this side's better. Let me show you. Yeah, there you go. It just doesn't look like you've got makeup on. It just looks like you have incredible dewy skin. Best highlighter I've ever used. I still do, I do think that for me, a glittery highlighter has its place, maybe on a, on a night out or something. I also put a little bit here and here, but for day to day, this is the most beautiful thing ever. And that's just my base. And then I'm just gonna do my eyebrows. I use the Refi eyebrow kit and do my mascara. I need to get a new mascara. Leave me your mascara recommendations because this one is not my favorite, the Bare Mineral, Bare Minerals Maximist mascara. It's fine, but it's not my favorite. So let me know your favorites and I'll come back when my makeup's done.
and that's my makeup done for the day i just put a little bit of mascara on because i'm at home and i don't need to um put loads of mascara on because i hate taking it off but i used the i've used bare minerals a lot of stuff their lip glosses are lovely very natural and now i'm just gonna sort my hair out a little bit because i slept in it with a clip which was a bad idea i feel like cinderella because there's a little bird in the window let me show you him he always joins me when i do my makeup he loves to look inside and watch i think he knows that there are people living in the house because when i travel from room to room he follows me so when i'm in the bedroom he's there looking in and then if i go into the bathroom he's there and then he follows me in in to do my makeup <laughs> and he was a little baby so he's he's getting bigger he's so cute I used the Dyson um, with this attachment this time. I do really like it, but it does not got the volume that when you use the curly Dyson thing, because I do have fine hair. I've got quite a lot of hair. That's the thing with my hair, I've got a lot of it. So it takes a million years to dry and it takes a long time in the hairdresser, but oh, I cannot get my parting. Actually, no, it does look quite nice once I've brushed it. And I got these kind of front framing pieces cut in, which does add a bit of volume. So actually, I think that's lasted quite well. I thought I would have to restyle it, but looks good. But I'm probably just going to pin it back anyway, because it's just me at home. <laughs> I've been using a rosemary oil. This is becoming a very beauty focused video. Oh, well. Um, and it's making a big difference. So I think because I used to have my parting on this side, I, obviously when it was this side, I've just ruined my beautiful parting that I just made. Uh, I I used to tuck my hair on this side and I saw a video, the amount of stuff I learned on TikTok, where a hairdresser mentioned to someone, or was it Emily Cannon? I think it was Emily Cannon, I was watching one of her videos or TikToks, and she went to her hairdresser and they asked her whether she had one side, that she, whether she was right or left-handed, because she had more damage on one side of her hair than the other, so the side that she was when she was writing or using her right hand, she was tucking her hair behind her left ear. It was pulling and it had created some damage. And I think that's exactly what's happened to me because I had my parting on this side. I tucked this side because I had a patch here that was going very, very thin. So when I had my hair in a ponytail, my, my hairline was further back than this side. I started to use rosemary oil and massage my hair before I wash it. Sometimes I'll just do it overnight and sometimes I will just do it half an hour before or just quite literally just before I wash my hair because it's better to use it than not use it at all. Um, I used the Miele rosemary oil. You don't wanna use pure rosemary oil because that can be damaging. You want to use a diluted rosemary like serum or oil that has been put in the right amounts. So don't just go, pu go buy pure rosemary oil on the internet. Find a brand like Mila um, that has dilute, diluted it with other carrier oils. But yeah, it's made such a difference. I don't know, I'm looking to try and get these wolf hairs down. You can see, let me try and get them. These short hairs here are growing back. So they used to be just not there. They used to be like baby hairs because I had broken them. And now they're all, it's very difficult to show you, but they're all growing back all these little fluff hairs they're all growing back and now when i pull my hair back like this you can see that there's not as much i mean you can see that it's thin here like it's thinner than the rest of my hair but it's growing back because before that literally was almost it was like kind of like this it was very white you could see a lot of my scalp so now it's returning to be more like this side you see it's just a bit thicker so if you have had an issue with hair breakage or hair thinning obviously mine's not anything extreme i think it's just normal if you have hair that there'll be places that get damaged or are tender or whatever i'm gonna get on now i am gonna pin my hair back this is why having these little pieces cut is so good because i can pin my hair back but it doesn't look so boring because i've got a few little face framing layers Oh, 
I popped on my Naked Generation floaty dress. It's not the most flattering thing in the world, but it's excessively comfortable. And I can wear it year round. I wear it in the summer because if it's hot, it's perfect, but I can wear it in the winter, like now with a cardigan. I'm gonna put some socks on and feel very cozy. When I'm at home, I'm either wearing a big floaty dress like this if I want to feel a bit nicer, <laughs> or I'll wear sweats, I'll wear trackies and a hoodie because that is all I can cope with. But today I'm at least gonna put this on because it does make a difference to me personally to put like a, a dress on, I'll feel floaty and yeah. Oh, and this um, cardigan I got in the MS sale. I was in there doing some food shopping and they had a sale on and I um, ruined I had this gorgeous cardigan from Simple Folk, which I would recommend, it's so beautiful, but actually Alex ruined it. Weirdly, he ruined it by washing it with this dress. This dress is brand new and you're supposed to hand wash these dresses. We put it in a delicate wash with that cardigan, Alex did, not realizing that, well, I think that he just thought because it's a delicate wash, it wouldn't matter that this is orange and that was white. And so some of this color went into the cardigan and I, when I say some, it had patches of reddy orange pink all over the cardigan. So yeah, that was a sad day. So I got this because I couldn't justify splashing out on the naked, uh, the Simple Folk cardigan again. So I just got a cheap one in them in a sale. I saw it and I was like, that's similar enough. <laughs> It'll do. And while we're at it with the beauty theme, I may as well share with you my perfume. I got this in France. So I don't even know if you can buy it. It's called Roger and Gallet. Rose. I was with my friend Cheryl. We were in a pharmacy and I was just like, that smells heavenly. So it makes me think of spring. One thing I do if I ever have little lemon peels from a drink is I chuck them in my sink because it's dirty right now. Pop this in, run the hot water for a, to fill up a little bit. I'll do a couple squeezes of washing up liquid. And then I just leave that to soak. It will smell lovely and the lemon acts kind of as a bleach. I don't know, it doesn't take any extra effort but it gives the sink a little bit of a clean and a little bit of a bleach from the lemon zest. Um, also, if I have lemons, I sometimes also pop them in a cup of tea because why not? m and are now doing vegan hot cross buns, so go grab your, yourself some. These have sultanas, raisins, orange, lemon peel, and spices. It is hot cross bun season, people which means spring is nearly here. <laughs> the daffodils are coming out in the garden and I could not be happier. I wish you could smell this. <laughs> it takes me back to college because I used to have a tea cake every day. I do have a recipe on my website to make these from scratch if you want to give it a go. As far as I can remember, it's not that difficult. I might make them again in spring in the coming weeks because I love hot cross buns so much. Having pets means that all of our furniture gets so grubby, especially this sofa and this ottoman. Actually, the ottoman is not the pets, that's us. Um, we usually put a rug on this sofa, but inevitably when we wash the rug, Roxy jumps on it, dirt gets underneath, and they really could do with a good deep clean. And I've been wanting to do this for weeks, so it's quite a good opportunity when I've got a Sunday where I've got, you know, free time to use my Bissell. We've got a Bissell pet cleaner and we've used it on furniture, we've used it on the carpet. It's an amazing thing to have 
if you have pets because it does work. So I'm going to Bissell the ottoman and the sofa and if it goes well and it doesn't take forever I will also do the um, armchairs but I'm not holding out too much hope because I know it can be quite a strenuous thing to do but it's very satisfying because a lot of dirt comes out so I'll show you the before and hopefully it'll look better afterwards. So this is what the sofas look like. They look horrendous. So you can see the other day I, um, I think Roxy jumped up and I wiped it with a stain remover and it just made how dirty these sofa sofas are so much more visible. Note that we got these sofa, this sofa not that long ago and I have also, <laughs> I have bissled it and I have cleaned it before, uh, maybe a couple months ago and it just already is so grubby. A lot of the reason this is happening is because our patio isn't finished, you can see out there the the gravel and the dirt. It basically means that anytime the animals go outside to do a wee or a whatever, they bring in a lot of dirt because there's gravel and there's mud. And also we've not been taking care of our garden because of this situation with the patio. It really puts me off using our garden. In fact, when I went out to the garden just then, I felt a bit sad that I literally don't ever go to the bottom of the garden anymore. Partly because I just have sadness and stress over this patio situation. So yeah, when she comes in from the back door, she will run in here and jump on here without us being able to stop her. So this is why it's so grubby. And then this ottoman, often we put our feet up on here. This is where I spilt something the other day and obviously you can see where it's clean and then where the dirty lines are. It really does look pretty awful. But this is quite recent, like this was not this grubby. It gets grubby quickly. And then these chairs, um, probably if you look closer, it's hard to show you with these because they are quite, they're actually really good if you have pets because the stripes really hide the dirt. But first and foremost, this sofa, let's do it. <laughs> So we're done that was quite the task but i'm so pleased it's so satisfying i really wish i could do the other side because obviously we have turned these a few times so there's like muck on the other side but they need to dry and it would just be really awkward so i think that it will be hopefully a thing that i i realized that actually just doing like one or two cushions isn't that time consuming having to do all of it is so what i'm going to try and do is if one of the pillows or one of the areas start to look dirty just do it then and I'm going to remember this <laughs> so that it doesn't become such a big job I'm also going to switch these chairs something I recommend for sure to do is to switch things like this that get used one of them gets used more than the other so obviously this is the one that faces the television so it gets used more so I'm going to switch them so that what this one doesn't end up becoming more worn than that one very very satisfying I'm so glad I did that I think that took like an hour an hour and a half maybe uh, so if I was doing just one cushion, it wouldn't be so time consuming. Let me show you how disgusting the stuff is. Look at that. I'm going to empty it in a second and show you properly, but that is absolutely disgusting, but also extremely satisfying. It's inevitable when you have pets, you know, you can't avoid it. Uh, I think I'm going to have lunch now and I might put the fire on in here so that it can dry the sofa cushions out quicker. And then I think this afternoon, change of plans, I'm going to my sister's to pick some daffodils because she lives on a farm 
and there's an area where there's loads of wild daffodils growing so we can go and cut them so I can hopefully get loads of daffodils put up around the house. It's daffodil season and where I live in Cornwall is where they grow all the daffodils. So I, I swear it's the place in the UK that they grow the most daffodils. There are so many fields around where I live and it's so beautiful this time of year. So that will bring me a lot of joy and I think that I'll do that instead of making a cake. We'll see. Maybe I'll make a cake later but... I'm trying more to say yes to seeing my family. Like, I see my family all the time, but anytime they ask me, I'm trying to just say yes, I'll do it. Because that's important. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna have my protein shake and make myself lunch. I think I've got leftover tofu scramble, but let me empty that disgusting stuff down the toilet, I guess. Oh, it's leaking. Is it leaking? A little bit. What do you say we go up for a round of frosty chocolate milkshake? Look at the color of that! Oh my god, it's horrible. How do you clean this actual thing? Because it's so grubby. I'm sure there's a way. I think I've shared this before, but these are like engineered wood. So it's recycled wood made into these logs. So it's quite a good eco-friendly option and they last way longer than normal wood logs. Like I'm always surprised at how little I have to change them or add new ones last night. I was like, how is this not, <laughs> how are they not burnt out by now? But they last forever. Hi. Hello. I was going to take you this morning, but I had a change of plans. We're going to go on the farm. You love the farm. You get to run around. Let's wrap this up, Bobby. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> I swear, when I have children, I don't know what I'll do because I get dog mum guilt. So if I haven't taken her out or followed the specific routine that she normally follows, I feel so guilty. Like She's just like following me about wagging her tail because she wants to go out. I cannot even fathom the guilt that you get as a mum when you have to work or you're busy or I don't know. myself a elderflower and rose cordial which is so good and then I've got my leftover tofu scramble on toast Alex made a wholemeal loaf the other day because I requested it because he hadn't made a wholemeal one in a while one of the best life hacks I was just thinking about it when I was doing stuff then I am someone who rushes I always rush I'm always on to the next thing as I'm doing a task I'm thinking about the next task that I've got to do which means that Throughout my 20s and my teens, I would just leave things lying about. I'm talking about this when it comes to being tidy, but it applies to everything in my life. But it, it does also apply to just, yeah, just cleaning up and tidying as you go. So previous me would have done that, um, those, those sofa cushions, or would have been like, yes, I achieved that task. That's something I've been wanting to do. How satisfying. And then I would have probably left the Bissell Hoover there. And then I would have not bothered tidying up because I would have been tired from doing that job. I would have made my lunch. I would have probably made a mess as I'd made my lunch. Then I'd sit down for my lunch. And then next thing I know, I've got to clean up the mess that I've made from lunch. I've got to put the Bissell Hoover away. I've got to put the cleaner away. I've got to pour it down the toilet, all that kind of stuff. And it becomes this, oh, I've still got to do that. Why didn't I do that at the time? And one thing I've learned is to just do things then before it, before it goes out of your brain. So if you're doing a task, just finish it. It will take you an extra 30 seconds. The mental um, strain that you think, oh, this is so annoying, I have to do this, this, this before I can finish, I'll do that later, is far more difficult than just doing it in that moment. And also when you're doing other things, to do things whilst other things are happening. So I put my tofu scramble in the microwave and said to myself, that's two minutes. I can probably empty the dishwasher within those two minutes. 
And so I emptied the dishwasher and I put some things away and I tidied up. And it means that when I come back in this kitchen, I can actually put my plate in the dishwasher rather than having to leave it on the side because there's no space in the dishwasher because it's clean. Very, very tiny little life hack and it's not even a life hack, but if you are like me and you are someone who rushes, who's always thinking of the next thing and you are naturally kind of t messy, this has been a game changer and maybe something I've only learnt with age that just do things as you go and the 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 little hack of doing stuff while something else is going on has changed my life in the last six months like literally anytime the microwave is on anytime i'm making myself a cup of coffee or tea if i'm i don't know setting something on a timer cooking something i do something else whilst that's happening and you get so much more stuff done without it being a mental drain honestly i'm gonna have my <laughs> lunch and I will figure out what I'm going to do after that. I might just sit on my computer and write a meal plan. I wrote a little list earlier so we're going to see how I'm going. Is there a pen? My drawers are looking so good since I organised them. I can open this up and find stuff straight away. You can watch that video up here if you want to see a declutter. So film vlog Well, I'm doing that so um Bissell, the sofas. I haven't done anything else on this list. <laughs> so I need to, basically my list is, I need to write a meal plan. My mum recommended this app called AnyList and it, it does cost money, but I think that because you can get a subscription as a family, uh, it's a little bit cheaper. But basically what she was showing me and my mind was blown, the way it works is that you have, um, you basically save a recipe from a website and it downloads it into any list, but it gets rid of all the adverts, it gets rid of all the other information and it just puts the recipe in there. And then if you wanna create a shopping list based on that recipe, you can tick the items that you don't have or you do have or untick them and it saves it to a shopping list for you. You can then like add stuff to that shopping list manually if you wanna buy other things outside of the recipes and you can create a meal plan so you can choose the recipes and plop them into your your week of food and your recipes. So I think that in a minute I'm gonna go into the garage because I have an hour and a half before I've got to go out and that could be a good use of my time to just play around with any list, save some recipes, decide what we're, we're eating this week. You can also manually enter recipes into there as well. I need to get Alex a birthday present because it's his birthday next week. I've got him one thing, but I need to get him something else. Uh, I need to plan my week, but I do that in bed at the end of the day after I've had a bath because Sunday is a bath day for me. Even though I had a, I had a bath on Friday, but it's because I was by myself. So I was like, what am I going to do? I guess I'll have a bath. <laughs> um, I want to order some spices online because in my recent declutter video, I did order some spices but because I reorganized everything, we have run out of a few more since I reorganized. So I need to order those. It's literally just, I think, mixed herbs and nutritional yeast and maybe one other thing. And I ordered them from Forest Foods because they do organic spices and they actually are cheaper. Um, and also I've got on here to read my book. So a lot of this stuff is kind of stuff I would do later. I like to have a list on a Sunday. I know some people that wouldn't be for them. I think you have to do what it makes you feel happy. I find on Sundays and Saturdays, if I don't have a list of things to do, I end up twiddling my thumbs, wondering what to do and not feeling good relaxing, but also not feeling good being productive. And I don't know if that's an anxious thing, if it's a my brain thing. And I, d I don't know, but I'm increasingly trying to share this these thoughts in my head with you because when I do, a lot of you really do relate and I always have this niggling thought in my mind going, don't say that because some people will criticize or they won't get it uh, or they'll say you're weird or I don't know, people are critical online. But then I remember actually when I hear other people talk about this stuff, it does make me feel a lot better. Or if they mention stuff and I don't relate to it, I just think, oh, I'm not like that. I'm quite different to that. And that's the beauty of being individuals, <laughs> that we're all quite different. So um, I personally find the weekends, because I'm not working, and maybe it's, maybe it's a self-employed thing, I don't know. I find myself beating myself up if I'm not productive. So if I'm not working, I find it very difficult to relax. So I sit down and watch television and I end up watching TV, sitting there thinking I should be doing something right now. I should be being productive. I should be tidying. I should be, I don't know, ticking something off a list. And it doesn't make me feel good. 
And I don't know if that's an indoctrinated thought from growing up in the world we live in. Who knows? But the bottom line is it does, I feel, end up feeling worse for it. And I end up having a bad sort of mental health day. So I find that continuing my lists that I do during the week for the weekends does make me feel better. I find on a Saturday is the best day for me to just get out of the house, go spend time with family and friends, do things, you know, go out to eat, walk Roxy somewhere nice. That's the day that I allocate to try and do something nice and sort of get out of the house. But then on Sunday, it's kind of more of a, a low key chill day where I'll tick some things off my list, um, do some household things. And I, I find that really positive and lovely because I don't enjoy just sitting and watching TV and doing nothing. I just don't enjoy it. Um, unless it's like, I don't know, unless you're like, oh, we're gonna have a cinema day and we'll go cuddle up and watch movies. It, I think it's the, the process of doing nothing where there's no, there's no reason for it. It doesn't make me feel good, which is probably quite normal. Um, so yeah, I do love to write a list because I have this planner and I write my lists every single day. So maybe that's also part of it. It's good to stick to your routine. I try and wake up at about a similar time, not exactly the same, but a similar time, have a similar routine, just a little bit more relaxed at the weekends. And it generally makes me feel better rather than having this kind of switch at the weekends where during the week, you're like waking up early, writing lists, being productive, doing stuff. And then the weekends suddenly you're doing none of it. In my head, I think, I think, oh, that's a really good thing because you have time off at the weekend to just do nothing because I've been busy, but actually it has the opposite effect. Anyway, a lot of rambling there. <laughs> um, I, just, I just find it helps. Same with Alex, he's similar to me and he finds if he's got something in mind that he wants to do, even if that's something in mind is to go for a walk, to see your friends, to go out for a meal, like whatever it is, it's good to have something in mind. Um, as I'm saying, I'm like, this is just such obvious stuff. Maybe it is, but it is something that we weirdly have struggled with for years. Weekends. I've struggled. I've even brought it up in therapy that I find weekends very difficult. And potentially that's because I'm an anxious person and my mind struggles to switch off. So if you're, if you're similar in that regard. So anyway, I'm going to go next door with a cup of tea, a slice of carrot cake. Um, and probably I'm going to spend, yeah, like an hour uh, looking at any list and that website my mum recommended and try and write a, a bit of a plan, a meal plan, because this is a habit I want to introduce is to on a Sunday, write a meal plan and then write a shopping list so that I'm not just buying stuff bit by bit and just eating the food that I'm recipe testing or making for videos, because that's nice, but it's also sometimes maybe not what you're fancying or what you want. So like having to have I don't know, a curry for lunch one day because it's left over and you're like, I really don't want a curry. I just think I should freeze food and, and plan it better. So that's what we're gonna do. I've got my countryside chic outfit on. Let me show you. <laughs> oh, much to Roxy's dismay, she's like, Mummy, we've got to go. We're actually five minutes early. I've got this jacket that I got in a charity shop in St Andrews when I was probably 20. And I have worn it ever since for dog walks. It's perfect if it's not cold, but it's not hot because it's that kind of jacket. I do, I do, I would quite like a barber jacket. So I'm gonna try and get one second hand because this one is very old and a bit grubby. Um, but it does the job, you know. I have bought uh, dog walking coats to kind of replace this in a way, but nothing really replaces it because it's so light. I've got my cardigan on still from m and I've got this like long sleeve thermal top that I've had for years. And then you can see these leggings are Lululemon, I think. They've got lines on them, what do you call it? Can you see? Roxy's very excited. I've got like lines on the, <laughs> on the leg. And then I've got fluffy socks. Oh, I know, you're so annoyed at me because I'm doing an outfit of the day. And then I've got my um, Blundstone Finisterre boots that I wear on all my walks. Let me show you properly. So they're constantly covered in mud and I always clean them up and then they end up getting grubby again because I they're my favorite shoes to walk in because uh, they are 
comfier than wellies so i would highly recommend these shoes they're the comfiest shoes ever you just have to wear thick socks um but i absolutely love them should we go now <laughs> let's go come on she's like i've waited all day for this <laughs> if it's going to be planted behind the wall no in the wall in the wall yeah uh... roxy Time to go on the lead. I'm back with an incredible loot of daffodils so basically we've cut them all when they're in like bud i did get, i couldn't resist getting a couple that had already bloomed but if you are cutting them then you want to do it when they're like this um but luckily yeah lucky where we live there's just so many and yeah that's my um brother brother-in-law's family's farm and they're just growing wild on all the sort of piles of um, dirt and mud in the kind of areas where there's lots of, there's like a whole area where there's lots of granite and stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna separate these out and trim them so they're all a similar length. So I'm gonna try, try and get the smaller ones together because there was one section where there were loads of really big ones and there was one section where there wasn't. So I'll get all the little ones out, separate them out and put them in some vases. I know that daffodils don't really last very long, typically, but I can go get more. <laughs> There's loads on the, the hedgerows here as well because I think that the, the seeds just spread. Oh my God, they smell so nice. <laughs> Yay. Good evening. All the daffodils are in their vases. I've got one on the table here. And depending on when this video goes live, I might insert a clip of when they're in bloom at the end. I've got myself this artichoke um, because we went by my friend's allotment. He runs Herland Roots. So if you live in Cornwall, go check them out because they deliver fresh fruit and veg. <laughs> to um i think no fresh veg sorry i don't know if they do fruit um to people in cornwall and i absolutely love it it's literally down the road from me he's a friend of mine and yeah he started it during the pandemic and i always mention him because it's great to support local business so if you are in the market for a veg box definitely check it out i'll leave it below but he had these artichokes that popped up early i think what did he call them oh my gosh that's so annoying i forgot what they're called but I need to figure out how to cook these. Uh, I'm not going to have it this evening, but I'm going to do some Googling and research. But I'm going to make myself some dinner. No clue what I'm going to have. I'm just looking. I can see that there's tofu, there's broccoli, there's mushrooms, which is kind of what I always eat when I'm on my own. But maybe I should have pasta. I'll figure it out, but um, 
yeah i'll say goodbye now because i think i've been rather chatty today hope you enjoyed today's video a little cozy productive but chilled out sunday i really enjoyed going to pick the daffodils i think i'm gonna make that a yearly tradition i think i'm gonna go back next week actually because what a wonderful thing to have the house filled with daffodils through the spring and it's a perfect time to take roxy for a walk she loves walking there because obviously there are lots of fields um, that are owned by my brother-in-law's family and it means that she can just go <laughs> go wild which as a cocker spaniel she loves so yeah i might go back and do that next week but i hope you've enjoyed today's video if you want to see more videos like this let me know because it's always really helpful to hear feedback on what content you're enjoying so i can film another one and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll see you in my next one hopefully it'll be a food video I'm not really sure. Yeah, or a renovation video. I'm not sure, but you'll see. <laughs> Bye.